Hi guys, welcome to the second episode of Road Rage. Yeah. Um, a little bit of a note, on this episode I'm going to try and be a bit less sweary. I'm going back through the first one, I was a little bit sweary, sorry. So I'm going, I'm going to try and keep all my videos friendly to all ages. That might not happen though. It might not happen. So what the f*** are we going to talk about today? You know what, let's just jump straight into the news item. I was reading a headline today. Doctors advise not doing the cinnamon cha challenge. You don't, don't know what the cinnamon challenge is. Pretty much a whole heap of YouTubers, mostly teenage kids, uh, dare themselves to swallow a tablespoon of cinnamon. Now this is new. It's, it's like planking or owling or thumbing, whichever one. one but it, it's da something dangerous that just turns to. What, what really surprised me was that they posted that today. The warning today, although there's been many, many warnings. Is it still going? People are still doing this. Because cinnamon is made from the cinnamon. I think, I think cinnamon. I don't know. Someone in the comments correct me if I'm wrong. But the root, or bark, no, it's bark actually, sorry, it's bark, is designed to keep water out. That's what it's for. So, when you line your mouth, throat, and stomach with it, it's not getting wet. That's scary as shit. And then people just still do it. It's ridiculous. Why do people do that to themselves? It's horrible. Then you have to ask yourself, why do people do it? Is it a case of double dog dare? Remember in the play school, you are you're chicken if you didn't do it? If you didn't do it, you are class chicken and then embarrassment for you. But I think another point is the whole dynamic of YouTube is to become famous or at least have the same sort of sensation to being famous. You make videos that can get attention. They can get a lot of attention. The cinnamon challenge, there are thousands, thousands of videos. It's like the Harlem Shake. Harlem Shake's not bad because, you know, people don't get hurt in that, mostly. You embarrass yourself, but you don't really hurt anybody. But the cinnamon challenge, there are thousands of videos of kids doing it. I suppose, join the crowd, get a lot of views, I suppose. But is it worth it? Is it worth risking having to go to hospital, a collapsed lung, choking, if d just for a few views? Being a YouTuber myself, and wanting views, of course, I want people to view my videos. There's better ways to do it. Probably not quicker ways, but a lot better, smarter, less dangerous ways. For example, I recently got in contact with another YouTuber who, um, Marley Han Hanum, I'm sorry, Marley, I didn't write your name down, but his um, show is called Marley Show. He's in Berlin, Turkey, or some country. <laughs> and because we have almost the same subscribe account, I, I asked. Asked him, did he want to collab together? Promo for promo and bounce ideas off each other and do videos together. And he emailed me back with quite an interesting response. A challenge, you see. A ch and the challenge was, in a roundabout way, to participate in Live Below the Line. It's a challenge. Live on $2 a day for five days. Food and drink. It gives insight into extreme poverty and you get people to sponsor you, enlist, you enlist different people and you raise money for extreme poverty. Like last year they raised uh, 2.5 million dollars. This is just Australians. 2.5 million dollars Australians raised for to break the cycle of extreme poverty in Cambodia and other countries. This included having a year eight. Because most children in Cambodia only go to school f until year seven and then join the workforce. And their hopes 
is that they can build years 9, 10, 11 and 12 to break that cycle and to help others. And I think we can do that. So I'm doing that at some point. Um, I'll have to do another video about it. So I'm going to be doing that. I'll be, I'll be, I'm going to try and get Sarah and Josh and others to do it with me. The challenge was for me to do that and make an interesting video about it. This is not the video, by the way, Harley. This is just me announcing that I'm going to do a video about it. This is the actual video I'm planning. I'm actually pretty happy with that, <laughs> with my planning. I do need to get a proper microphone for that one, though. But once I do... But once I get a proper microphone and I'll start making that video, it'll be good. But back to the views thing, so... Collaborating with other YouTubers, that is a good way of getting views and getting to know people because I pretty much sat by myself, this lonely little YouTuber, I realised that wasn't working for me. So I'm going to start branching out to other YouTubers do the, and work with them. Now I'm not meaning like Shane Dawson and I'm a blackberry. <laughs> like the f don't talk to me. No, I'm I'm talking about like Marley. Uh, people who have about the same subscriber count to me, so we can build on top of one another. Guys, I encourage, encourage you to go check out Marley's channel. Yeah, um, he, he does some pretty funny stuff. It's not a 40, 40 minute video like this. <laughs> uh, but I'll put annotation somewhere here and a link down down in my glove box. Yeah, let's do that. Description for Road Rage is my glove box. It's a flaw in my other videos. Um, that's another thing. Uh, on Saturday I uploaded a video called Cha 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 Changes which is uh, a new vlog, a new segment, new series you can call it that. I pretty much, now that I have a studio and a proper camera and a proper cup of coffee and a proper cup of pot, oh my god, I can say it! <laughs> Why couldn't I do that on Saturday? <laughs> um, and I started make, making videos again. Now, now on, on Saturday was pretty much me just wanting to grab a whole heap of studio equipment and go with it because it was pretty cool. But what I need is, I need two things for that. I need a name for that segment because it's not, it's not a vlog. Technically this is more of a vlog than anything else. That's a weekly video or something. It's uh, one of the biggest things that I mentioned in that Saturday video was a schedule. You try to get around me. No. F*** you. Um, the schedule being, I will film my weekly video. A weekly video on Saturday or Sunday. Edit it and upload it on either Sunday or Monday. Now, why it's Saturday or Sunday? is because with work and school, it's uncertain when I'll be able to make a video. Seriously, I'm going the f speed limit. By doing that, it gives me a bit of flexibility, because I might be working like, all day Saturday, so I'll be able to do it Sunday or vice versa. And then that way, it gives me a bit of ambiguity without being too amb ambiguous, if you get me. in a hurry. And I'm still unsure on this, on what days I'm going to do this. I'm, I'm agreed that I'm going to do it once a week. That's a given. Unless you guys say to me, Dylan, it's, it's a half an hour video. I'm going to watch a half an hour video. 
every goddamn week. If I get plenty of those, then I might do it every four months, something like that. But for now, they're weekly videos. Alright guys, and let's add this to the schedule. Road Rage will be on Wednesdays or Thursdays. They're going to be uploaded in there and I'll film them either Tuesday or Wednesday. The other thing that I wanted you guys to do that if I miss a video, hammer me. Like, if it comes around Tuesday and you haven't gotten a weekly video, hammer me, the, hammer me down. Go on my Facebook if you're my Facebook friend. Dylan, we want to see your goddamn video on my channel comments on my last video this one or like something like that where's the weekly video twitter tumblr yahoo myspace bebo I haven't seen limestone lizzie for a while it's funny i actually get worried about her I don't really know her you know, we're coming past the war memorial. As we go by, you might be able to see that they're setting up a huge grandstand and everything. That's because um, it's Anzac Day. That's coming up. I want to say, because I'm trying to explain it to international people, um, what it's like. Like, Britain has Remembrance Day, but we have Remembrance Day too, and it's not like that. It's kind of like that. It's different. It's about the Anzac troops who... The biggest story is who landed on Gallipoli. You actually got a wrong order from the Brits. And... They... Were slaughtered. By the Turks. They, they were... Literally uphill battle. And... It just went on. For quite a while. But... And Anzac Day... Remembers... Fallen soldiers, not from just from that battle, but from all Australian battles, and the comradeship that we as Australians have, and the bravery, just brilliance, endurance. You know, we are, as a nation have for one another. It's been so long since I went to history class. H and L, getting it there. So, guys, down in the comments. Don't have anything to talk about, because I didn't bring enough to talk about. Sorry. Well, any content? Yeah. Sispa. Uh, I can talk about sis. Sispa. I think it's that now. The internet said sensing. Set. Yeah. Can't talk. The internet censoring. The internet censoring bill. Um, is back in play. And this was pointed out to me by Anonymous, the um, online terrorist group, that while everyone was occupied by the Boston bombings, CISPA got through one of the houses, which is horrible, but took advantage of a vulnerable time and and got through one of the houses and um, down in my glove box I will put um, links for people to go and fight against that because I put links there that you don't need to be an American citizen to fight against because that happens too often, America does something the whole world follows. And being a big ally of America and with Barack Obama pretty much being Jilly Gillard's best friend, or however they want to portray that in the media, um, if CISPA passes, because there's similar bills trying to get passed here in Parliament in, in Australia, uh, they're not doing very well, though. Um, we're rolling out the national broadband network, so fiber optics for everybody, yay. So, censoring the internet right now wouldn't be 
too good of a plan, even though people are criticizing the NBN and everything. But if America was to pass a censoring bill, censoring, spying, um, lack of privacy on the internet, then Australia will probably fall into suit. So again, links in the glove box, or the description box, where go up, type in your email address, and tweet this politician that said that people who are fighting CISPA are only 14-year-old bloggers. I'm not a 14-year-old blogger. I act like it sometimes, but I'm not. I might also put an annotation somewhere here for a video where you can learn more about CISPA. I have a hope I'm pronouncing that right. I kind of didn't want to make a video about it. Not because I, I, I don't respect it. It's more of the fact that it's... How am I going to top jo John Green and him and so many other YouTubers? But the Boston bombings. You know, one of the biggest bombings in America since 9-11. Uh, what I'm about to say, I hope you're not going to take it in the wrong way. But the Boston bombings have brought out the best in humanity. It was a horrible, tragic event. But hours after that, people have flooded the Boston Marathon website saying that they're going to be doing it again next year. And people immediately jumping into action, helping those on the ground, giving blood. They had enough blood within hours, which is fantastic. And the amount of global support, and it's just amazing. Where And I saw this post on Tumblr, and I'm sorry, I can't remember who said it. Um... If I do find it, I'll put their link in, in the glove box as well. Um, someone had posted um, that humanity is just disgusting. Something along those lines. And this person said, I'm paraphrasing, no, humanity is wonderful. For one person to place a bomb there's hundreds to help clean up. For one, one group of violence, there's a thousand of supporters for those of the families there. And that the voice, uh, voice of, of the evil need to be drowned out by the voice of the good. And That's what amazed me with the news on this subject. It was the news covered it covered the um, tragedy, of course, but it also covered how great the people were, how great the supporters and the prayers and constant coverage of the church, humanity in its darkest darkest times be the most sympathetic. I believe that. Alright guys, wasn't much to you to swear and yell out, yell out today. Sorry. Bye!